Hi, I'm Jeff, and today I'm talking to you about the voice design process. Now, voice design, or voice user interface design, is a very new thing, so it's kind of difficult to find a nice process you can follow when you're designing an app or a skill. I tried to find one on the internet, but I couldn't find one anywhere, so I've made you one you can follow. What I've done is taking some of the most popular design thinking processes, where it goes left to right in three different phases, and then I've put some of the more popular, um, useful voice design methods on top of that. The first phase is all about the interaction between a user persona and a system persona. Now the user persona is very similar to what you might be used to from UX design or UX UI design. It's just the person that's using this skill, app, or experience. The only thing to keep in mind with voice is that you might want to list all the different devices this person uses on a regular basis because voice experiences can change from device to device very easily. So it'd be important to know whether they have a smart speaker or maybe they just have Siri on their phone. That'll help you gauge what kind of voice experience you want to have. And then of course, along with the user persona, is a very completely new thing called a system persona. And a system persona is the thing that's speaking back to the user. So this is like Siri, for example. What's great about designing for voice is you get to design this system persona and how it actually behaves, acts, sounds, and this is a really powerful new thing you can try. So one of the cool things about a system persona is you get to actually decide how this thing seems. So Siri has certain qualities that have been designed on purpose. You can think about the same thing when you're designing a voice experience. And if you're having trouble thinking about like how to make a system persona, think about Luke Skywalker and R2-D2. So they're like a user persona and a system persona. And the thing is, R2-D2 doesn't even speak any words, but it has a personality, right? It beeps, it has emotion in the way it says things. This is the kind of thing you'll be thinking of when you're designing a system persona. And the third thing into the understand phase is user journey mapping or customer journey mapping. Now, you don't need to do the entire customer experience for a voice experience. You just need to pick one phase of your customer journey and you focus on that for your voice experience. So for example, uh, Car2Go, when they made their voice experience, they didn't design the whole experience of Car2Go. They just simply focused on booking a car. So they picked booking a car, and that's the thing they put into their Amazon Alexa skill. Now, you might not always go through the understand phase when you're designing a voice experience, but you definitely will the first time. The next phase that we're going to look at is called the explore phase. And that's also made up of three things. The first thing is going to be sample dialogues. Very simple, back and forth between the user and the system persona in an ideal situation. So the ideal path they can follow is called the happy path in voice design. So this doesn't include things like, I'm sorry, I can't do that, or anything like that. Just the positive, ideal things that can happen. Because this is your first draft, right? And since it's a first draft, the next thing you might do is called a table reading. And this is where you just get actors to represent the user persona and the system persona and go back and forth and go through these sample dialogues. You want to have someone taking notes nearby, probably the voice designer, and then you just see how these interactions go. This is a good opportunity to make early edits and kind of figure out early on like how this is going to feel as a voice experience. When you get more serious about testing your voice experience, you get to try something called Wizard of Oz testing. And much like the movie, you're going to have a user go into a room where he's interacting with some technology. Um, you can set sort of a fake Amazon Alexa on the table, um, the user's by themselves, and they're giving a task, and they go through it. So what you do in the other room is you can trigger what the system persona might say to the user as he's going through testing. So you can either pick a list of things you've already determined, or you can even get a microphone and pretend to be the system persona from the next room. And this is going to be a really good way to see how a user interacts with the voice assistant or the smart speaker alone, one-on-one, -on -one, much like it'll be in real life. So that's a really fun, cool way to test. After that, once you've done a lot of testing and you understand what's happening, you're going to move into the materialize phase. Now the materialize phase is when you start to see your voice experience come together. And the first thing you're going to do in the materialize phase is lots and lots of user flow charts. So user flows or flow charts, um, these things are going to be how you map out the entire experience from a high level view. So for the first time, you're going to see the entire voice experience represented visually. I'm sure you've seen user flows or flow charts if you're a UX designer, um, but this is going to be a visual way to show everything that possibly could happen. These are kind of like the wireframes of voice design, and essentially they're just the blueprints for the conversation that you're going to have between the user persona and the system persona. So once you've got those finalized, you can move into voice scripts, and voice scripts are like the hi-fi designs of voice design. This is going to be like the final deliverable from a designer. 
They'll have every single possible utterance or response put into a spreadsheet and organized very neatly that'll basically be anything that could happen in this voice experience. Now you can take this spreadsheet, you can hand it off to a developer, you can code it yourself, or you can use tools like VoiceFlow, um, and then it's ready to go and put into a skill. But a lot of the new smart assistants, smart speakers, they have screens as well. So when we have screen interactions in a voice experience, we call it multimodal interactions because there's multiple ways you can interact. So if you have multimodal interactions that you wanna put into your experience, do that at the very end. So there's a concept we call voice first, where you design the voice experience first, much like a mobile first approach a UI designer might take. So you do voice first, get it all sorted, and then you think about the screen interactions. Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with multimodal interactions. You can do paper prototyping, Adobe XD. They even have a nice voice prototyping tool. So there's lots of ways you can check that your voice design experience has all the right screen interactions. Now, the final step that I said before in voice scripts, um, if you're doing a voice only experience, um, you also can do things with voice flow, which can turn some of your scripts into code and you don't even need a developer. So actually this voice design process could be everything you need and your skill or your app could be completed. And one of the greatest things about this voice design process is that it's exactly the same for Google, for Amazon, um, for Apple, for all these platforms, um, you can design these voice experiences exactly the same way. So start off with this process, see if it works for you. Of course, you can remix and make it your own. If you follow this process, you're gonna be designing really nice voice experiences in no time. So those were some helpful tips for designing for voice. If you have any tips of your own, or perhaps you have another voice design process you follow, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.